what is going on everybody welcome back to another video with the afro nurse today we are going to be discussing the medication alendronate so let's talk about the expected pharmacologic action or effect so what is the mechanism well the first thing that we need to know about this drug is that it is classified as a biphosphonate so what are biphosphonates they are any group of drugs that are used to limit the loss of bone density and conditions such as osteoporosis and bone cancer. Another pharmacologic action, if you will, of this drug is that it inhibits the resorption of bone by inhibiting osteoclastic activity. So in layman's term, it's a biphosphonate that limits the loss of bone density by inhibiting osteoclastic activity but now we're going to talk about the therapeutic effect so obviously its effect is for the reversal of osteoporosis but it also helps to decrease the progression of Paget's disease so why would this medication be prescribed well again kind of hammering this point home it would be prescribed for the treatment and prevention of postmenopausal osteoporosis in women for treatment of osteoporosis in men, obviously, for the treatment of Paget's disease, and for the treatment of corticoid steroid induced osteoporosis in patients taking more than or equal to 7.5 milligrams of prednisone a day with evidence of decreased bone mineral density. So let's talk about the complications and the adverse effects. Well, we can see the different body systems that are affected. The central nervous system for one, cardiovascular system, you see atrial fibrillation, the skin, eyes, ears, nose, and the throat, musculoskeletal, we see things like muscle pain, femur fractures, osteonecrosis, primarily in the jaw. In the jaw. Um, and we see asthma for uh, the respiratory system. However, we are going to focus on the gastrointestinal tract because there are a lot of adverse effects. Um, they include abdominal distension and pain, acid regurgitation, constipation, diarrhea, dyspepsia, which is just indigestion, dysphagia, so difficulty swallowing, esophageal cancer and ulcer, uh, esophagitis, flatulence, gastritis, nausea, taste perversion, and vomiting. So for maybe nursing students that want to know more, uh, med students or PA students that I assume need to know more, uh, why is it cause, uh, why does this drug cause so many GI adverse effects? So it's hypothesized that biphosphonates in general compromise the protective hydrophobic mucosal barrier of the GI tract. So this allows gastric acid to agitate the epithelial lining. So the chronic irritation and the inflammation, this leads to erosions and or ulcerations. And this is why we'll see things like dyspepsia, um, dysphagia, um, esophageal cancer and ulcer, uh, gastritis, nausea, etc. So let's talk about medication administration. There's one route by mouth, PO. Um, but for adults, there are a lot of different indications. So we talked about um, this drug being used for osteoporosis, and we can see what that dosage would be for either the treatment of osteoporosis or the prevention of osteoporosis. Uh, for Paget's disease, you can see what that dosage would be. And we also, well, the medication administration for other indications uh, include the treatment of corticosteroid-induced osteoporosis in men and postmenopausal women, as well as the treatment of corticosteroid-induced osteoporosis in postmenopausal women not receiving estrogen. Now we can see what those doses would be. So one thing to keep in mind about this drug overall is that it does have poor bioavailability, about 0.6 to 0.8%. All right, what are the contraindications? What are precautions? So it's contraindicated in abnormalities of the esophagus, which delay esophageal emptying like a stricture or 
um, ecclesia. So, what is a stricture? So basically, think of stenosis, right? Narrowing of blot of, of whatever the 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 structure is. So, it's caused by damage to the esophagus that causes inflammation or swelling. When this occurs, the space in the esophagus becomes smaller, making it tighter or making it feel tighter and compromising function. On the flip side, achalasia is a serious condition that also affects your esophagus. The lower esophageal sphincter is a muscular ring that closes off the esophagus from the stomach. If you have achalasia, your lower esophageal sphincter fails to open up during swallowing. So this will lead to a backup of food within the esophagus. And this condition can be related to damaged nerves in the esophagus or a damaged lower esophageal sphincter. Other contraindications include inability to stand or sit upright for at least 30 minutes, renal impairment, and pregnant women because of the harm it can do to the fetus. For precautions, you want to use caution if the patient has a history of upper GI disorder, pre-existing hypercalcemia and vitamin D deficiency, and invasive dental procedures, cancer, chemotherapy, corticosteroids, angiogenesis inhibitors, poor oral hygiene, periodontal disease, anemia, coagulopathy, or infection. So let's talk about drug to drug interactions. Calcium supplements in acids and level thyroxine may decrease the absorption of alendronate. You may be asking what in the world is level thyroxine? It's a thyroid medicine that replaces a hormone that's normally produced by your thyroid gland to regulate your body's energy and metabolism. Um, another drug to drug interaction, it does doses greater than 10 milligrams a day increase the risk of adverse GI events when used with NSAIDs, so non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. And ran ranitidine as given IV can increase blood levels when combined with alendronate. And for those that don't know, uh, ranitidine is known as an H2 blocker. So it works by reducing the amount of acid in your stomach. Uh, it's used to prevent and treat heartburn and other symptoms caused by too much acid in the stomach. So let's talk about food to drug interaction. So food significantly decreases absorption um, and beverages like caffeine, mineral water, and orange juice can also decrease absorption. However, it should be noted that the drug should be administered with water first thing in the morning about six to eight ounces, 30 minutes before the, the individual takes any other medications or before they take any food. So don't take it with food, take it before food, take it before you drink your coffee, before you drink your OJ, before you, you drink your mineral water. Um, and you, the individual can take it with regular water. Nursing interventions for the nurses out there. We want to assess the patient for low bone mass before and periodically during therapy. Um, and we're primarily going to do this by assessing labs for osteoporosis. Uh, so we're going to assess serum calcium before and periodically during the therapy. Um, hypocalcemia and vitamin D deficiency should be treated before initiating alendronate therapy. Um, in addition, it may cause mild increase of calcium and phosphate. We're also going to assess symptoms of Paget's disease, so bone pain, headaches, decreased visual and auditory acuity, and increased skull size. So for Paget's disease, we want to monitor alkaline phosphatase before and periodically during the therapy. So for client education, we are going to kind of reiterate a lot of things we've already talked about. So number one, obviously with any medication, we need to instruct the patient to take the medication as directed. For this one in particular, they need to take it first thing in the morning, 30 to 30 minutes before any other medications, beverages, or food. Um, and as I said before, it should be taken with plain water. Um, if they miss a dose, uh, skip a dose, 
and resume the next morning. Do not double dose this or take later in the day. Uh, if a weekly dose is missed, take the morning after remembered and resume the following week on a chosen day. Do not take two tablets on the same day and do not discontinue without consulting healthcare professionals. Next, we want to caution the patient to remain upright for 30 minutes following a dose to facilitate the passage to the stomach and minimize the risk of esophageal irritation. We want to advise the patient to discontinue alendronate and notify healthcare provider if pain or difficulty swallowing, retrosternal pain, or new worsening heartburn occurs. We want to advise the patient to eat a balanced diet and consult healthcare professionals about the need for supplemental calcium and vitamin D. We want to encourage the patient to participate in regular exercise and to modify behaviors that increase the risk of osteoporosis. So these are these are things like you know smoking and reducing alcohol cons consumption. We want to advise the patient to inform healthcare professionals of alendronate therapy prior to dental surgery. We want to caution the patient to use sunscreen and protective clothing to prevent photosensitivity reactions. We want to advise the patient to notify healthcare professional if blurred vision, eye pain, or inflammation occurs. And for females, we want to advise them to notify healthcare professionals if pregnancy is planned or suspected or if they're breastfeeding. Ultimately, what are we looking for? We want to see a decrease in osteoporosis in postmenopausal women. Um, for, for, this, for this demographic, we want to reassess the need for medication periodically and consider discontinuation after about three to five years in patients with low risk of fractures. Um, and if it is discontinued, we want to reassess fracture risk periodically. In addition, another outcome is for the treatment of osteoporosis in men, decrease in the progression of Paget's disease, and treatment of corticoid steroid-induced osteoporosis. And that takes us to the end of this presentation. I want to thank you guys for coming back and watching another one. Thank you for rocking with me. Thank you for learning. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Stay tuned for the next video. It's the Alpha Nurse, and I will see you guys later. Peace.